shout hallelujah. If you are ready, please let me know. Right. As I said today, I'm expecting God to give us a testimony in whatever area of our life we're looking unto Him. I am believing that as you receive today, you will return in the next seven days with your testimony in Jesus' name. Is there anybody here for the first time? Today is your first time in the church. If today is your first time, let's celebrate you. Let's welcome you in the church. All right, thank you for joining us on this program. This is Destiny International Christian Assembly. I'm Pastor Jide with the alternatives, bringing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom directly in the comfort of your home. We appreciate you and thank you for connecting with us on a regular basis on your favorite TV station. May the Lord bless you. The subject I'm, I'm teaching on today is the subject of health and healing. And I try to look for what I should title it, so I decided to say, use Jeremiah 30, 17, I will restore your health. That's the word of the Lord. He said, I will restore your health. Not I may, not I might, not I'm thinking about it, but I will restore your health. By the grace of God, I want to present to us the word of God. And as I present the word of God to us, I also want to expect us or help us to receive our healing through the words that is coming to us. In Psalm 102, he said, uh, Psalm 107, I think verse 20, he said, I, he sent his word, and his word healed them, and his word delivered them. He sent it, it brought about their healing, and he also brought about their deliverance. No matter what sickness in your body today, for those of you watching and connecting with us, no matter the diseases, no matter the name the doctors have called it, I'm believing that as the word of God comes directly and you receive it this morning or today, whatever part of the world you are watching, I believe that you will receive your healing in Jesus' name. Now, Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17, it says, I will restore health unto you. And heal you of your sicknesses, says the Lord. The beautiful thing about this one verse is it wasn't the prophet speaking. It wasn't a man just speaking what the Lord said. It's God speaking to man and said, I am in the business of giving you a sound health. It is never the will of God any day, any time. It is never the will of God for anyone to remain sick. It is never the will of God, I'm going to say that categorically, and I'm going to say it without any regret. God does not want you sick. It, he never gives anybody sickness. He never uses sickness to teach us a lesson. It is not his will. It is not his plan. And if you are here today or you are watching and you've heard that, that God give you that sickness to teach you a lesson or it's a cross, listen to me. It's a lie coming from the devil. And the more you believe that, the more you remain in your situation. If it's the will of God to heal you, if it's the will of God that Jesus went about everywhere, Acts chapter 10, 38, Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, and Jesus 
when he began his preaching ministry, the Bible says he went into every city looking for those people who are sick. And he healed all kinds and all kinds and all manners of sicknesses and disease. Then why would God send sickness to people? If one of the things, the beginning of the preaching, the ministry of Jesus on earth was looking for people who are sick to deliver them from the bondage of the devil. Sickness is an oppression of the devil. Sickness of any kind is not the will of God. And we must get this into our system, into our spirit, until we receive and don't tolerate or entertain any other thoughts in that regard, then we will never, never be free from any form of sickness we are going through. The moment I begin to think, maybe God want me, you are defeated already. The moment I begin to think, okay, it's okay to be coughing for one or two days, it's okay. You don't say it, but you think about it. As a man think, so is he. Sickness is never, never, never the will of God of any kind. And I want to mention that at the onset. Health and healing is the will of the children of God. Any day, any time, anywhere, in any circumstances, the disciples of Jesus walk on the streets of Galilee, Jerusalem, and wherever they go. There was not one record. Check your Bible. Check your Bible. I don't care if it's a Pentecostal, Anglican, check your Bible. Methodist, Catholic Bible, check your Bible. There was not one record where even Judas Iscariot was sick. Amen? The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 34, God is no respecter of any man. What he says to one, he says to all. What he does to one, he does to all. God has no respect of any person. If we do what he says we should do, we will all receive what is attached to that. None of his disciples were sick. None of them. No, read in the Acts of the Apostle. No member of the church was recorded sick. They brought the sick to the church, amen, and they received healing. James says, the brother of Jesus in James chapter, chapter 5, he said, is anyone sick? If, if, if anyone is sick, it's conditional. Let him come to the church. Let him call the elders of the church. Let them lay hand on him. And even if he commits sin, he will be forgiven. Amen? That is the desire of God for you and I, to live sickness-free. And we can. Say, I can. Say it convincingly, I can. I will restore. I will restore. Go back to Jeremiah 30, 17. I will restore health unto you. I will restore health unto you, says the Lord. Let me show us something in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 28, which I found out uh, a couple of some times ago. In verse 24, sorry, it said, The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so, shall it, so it shall come to pass. And as I have purposed, so it shall stand. Isn't that good news to us? He said, I sworn, whatever I think concerning you will come to pass. And whatever I plan or purpose, it will stand. And the plan and the purpose of God is to restore health to you. There is no devil in hell. There is no crisis of sickness on earth that can bound you if you have understanding of the plan of God for your life. And I pray that anyone that comes here today, by the word of my mouth and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you, will, you are leaving this place free of your sickness in Jesus' name. I said you are living after today in Jesus' name, sickness-free forever. 
in the name of Jesus. Now, what I want to do is I want us to look at scriptures in order to possess our healing. And I want us to look at how to get it. Because I claim to be Christian doesn't mean I'm going to live in health. Because I am born again doesn't mean I will not be sick. But we need to look at the scripture and see how to receive it and how to retain it and how to continue to enjoy it. Does that make sense to us? We must know how. If we ignorance of a thing, it's not an excuse. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And the church is suffering from a lot of things. Our sister was praying there about freedom from sin. Our sister was praying about, you know, uh, unity and harmony in, in home. A lot of things we go through today is because we lack wisdom and we lack understanding. But I pray God will help all of us, including myself, so that we can enjoy the promises of God in Jesus' name. So let's look at the how. Acts chapter 3 in verse 5. Peter and James were going to the temple to pray. They met a man who was born impotent. The man was there begging for money, not begging for healing. He was begging for, for, for money. And Peter said to him, man, look at us. Silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I'm going to give you. Now, the key here is what I want you to write down. After Peter have spoken to him, or Peter and John, but after speak up, Peter has spoken to him, there was a statement the Holy Spirit re recorded that you must never miss. So he gave them his attention. Everybody say attention. Now, the word after attention in your Bible is expecting to receive something. We don't enjoy or receive the promises of God until our expectation is intact. We don't receive the promises of God until we have full, full expectation. Expectation is the driver of faith. And expectation is what the, the foundation where faith operates by. It says in Hebrews chapter 11, faith is the substance of what we, what we what? The word hope there in Greek is what we are expecting. You don't receive and enjoy the promise of God without expe expectation. So it takes expectation to take the delivery of what belongs to us in Christ. A couple of years ago, I think I've shared this with us already. I woke up on a Saturday morning, and I was in severe pain, severe. I don't know if my wife can remember uh, my daughter, her daughter. I couldn't st stand up. I knew, initially I thought, okay, it's just okay, you know, when you told, they said you have to have some pain, you know, and, and sometimes when you receive all this nonsense, you experience them. And I was walking literally like this. I couldn't sit down. I couldn't lie down. I couldn't walk. And it went like that for the whole day. And I had to prepare for church the next day. Obviously, my wife was concerned, what are you going to do? I just kept pushing it aside. I just, it's going to go, it's going to go, it's going to go. I spoke some words, I command, I decree. I never spoke the pain. I tried to follow whatever I know about the scripture. Six o'clock, the pain intensified, six o'clock in the evening. So it's either I call off the church, or I come and I said, Praise the Lord, Brad George, is over to you now. Or oh, I don't know why when I mention Brad George, you always laugh. <laughs> I didn't prepare nothing. 
Nothing. But I said, Lord, I'm going to go there tomorrow and I'm going to preach. Preach what? And I know by the time I stand on the altar, I know that I am going to get healed. I woke up in the morning. I couldn't have birth. I, that's just, I couldn't shower. I couldn't, I couldn't stand. Our older daughter has to dress me up. Shoes, socks, trousers, everything. And my wife drove me to church, you know, to come out of the car right there in front of the door. I, I pretend to all of you walking as if everything is okay. Because I don't want you to say, okay, if we can be sick, then we can be sick. Have you not read Strike the Shepherd and the Sheep Will? It, it's, it's correct. It's right. Those who claim that you cannot be free from sickness is because they have never experienced divine health. Can I hear me? If you experience it, you will talk about it with audacity in the name of Jesus. Amen? I walked in here. I carefully sat down on my chair there. Everything was going on. And then it's time to preach. Slowly walk, mount the pulpit. As soon as I stood here, I was talking. I just pick up a subject. I think on healing. I can't remember. I was just talking. By the time I talked, maybe five minutes, I was moving. Everything was okay. From that day till forever, I have never experienced that again. Listen to me. I did not take one paracetamol or panadol. Neither did I have ointments to rub my back. I am not saying those things are wrong. Did I make myself clear? I am not saying don't use medication. I am not saying if you use medication, you go, you sin it. That's not what I'm saying. I don't want anybody to go here and say, Pastor said don't use medication. No. We have doctors and nurses in our midst, and I thank God for them every day. Amen? But what I'm saying is, if you're going to enjoy, receive, and enjoy divine promises in your life, your faith must be based on expectation. That's the message I'm trying to share with us. Faith is the substance of things going, uh, um, hoping you hope for. And then it's the evidence of the things you have not seen. In, in Psalm 87, 84 verse 7, he said, they go from strength to strength. The word strength there means they go from health to health. Strength in the Bible always connotes health. When you are sick, do you have strength? Health always, I mean strength always connotes strength. Strength, health connotes strength. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? They go from strength to strength, everyone that appears in the presence of God. And I'm telling you today, by the time we partake of the communion this morning, and by the time you, your expectation rises, there is no name the doctor have called that disease in your body or sickness in your body that will not disappear today in Jesus' name. I said it will disappear in Jesus' name. What is expectation before we round off? Expectation is a mental scriptural picture of your desire. Expectation is a mental scriptural picture picture of your desire. You have what you want in your mind. You know exactly what you want. This is not yet, if it may be, I don't know, it's the will of God. I really don't, I'm not sure. Maybe I have to go through it for five, six days. Maybe if I wake up tomorrow, it will not be there. No. Expectation is the mental scriptural picture. You have it based on the word of God, what the word of God says concerning that particular situation in our context, healing. Amen? What does God say about sickness in my body? What does God say about me? He says, now 
is the time for salvation, not tomorrow. Salvation is not to be saved. Salvation is to be delivered. And salvation connotes healing and health and salvation of life. Because Jesus did not die on the cross twice, did he? He died how many times? One, to save us for eternity and to deliver us from all the oppression of the devil here on earth. One sacrifice. And on that tree, he said, it is finished. Can I hear me? Whatever plague you till today, I announce to you in the name of Jesus that you are coming out free today in Jesus' name. Expectation is a mental, scriptural picture. What picture do you have in your mind concerning your state of health? If you have inhaler and you are inhaling, I'm not telling you don't inhale. When last did you pray and believe that this is your last inhaling? And believe. If you are having any kind of pain, I don't care if it's asthma or arthritis. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's coughing or cancer. There is no sickness you expect God to heal you for, from that God will not heal you from. There is no sickness. Let me give you an example. In Romans chapter 4 verse 18, the Bible says, on the contrary, talking about Abraham, childless for all his life, barren, so to say, his wife cannot have children. He cannot produce. Even if they sleep together, nothing is working because Sarah said it. He said, can my husband, does he even know how to do this thing again? Everything is dead. The Bible says, hope in hope he believed. Contrary to hope, rather, in hope. Contrary to the expectation of the doctors. Contrary to the expectation of people, your own expectation is what brings about your belief. What are you expecting God to do for you today? Let me rephrase. What are you expecting God to do for you now? Contrary to whatever hope, in your own expectation, remember what expectation is. It is a scriptural picture, mental scriptural picture. That's what expectation. You have this picture in your mind of what God says concerning you, and you hold on to it. Come rain, come sunshine. The Bible says in Proverbs that the expectation of the righteous Cannot be what? Cannot be what? For surely there is an end. And today is the end of that situation. For surely there is an end. Today is the end of that sickness in your life. For surely there is an end. Today is the last day you will ever pray over that sickness again. Because, the Bible says, your expectation will not be disappointed. So what I want you to do is raise your expectation when we begin to pray this morning. Raise your expectation. Expectation is a script, mental scriptural picture. What are you expecting God to do today? Have it in your mind. Whatever you believe, God says, I am able to do, listen to this, exceedingly. What do you believe? Exceedingly. He says, abundantly. And not only that, beyond and above what you think. Okay, I'm believing for health. God says, I will do exceedingly, abundantly, be and above. Ephesians 
raise your expectation this morning. And I expect God to visit you in Jesus' name. So, Acts 3, 5 again. So, he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something. Expectation is the key to possess the promise of God, as I've said earlier on. I want you to think about this, and then we take communion. Anybody remember the Shunammite woman in the Bible? In, in First Kings, his wife, I mean, her son died. She cried. She laid the son on the bed of the man of God because she built a place for the man of God in the upper room so that when Elisha passed by, she had somewhere to stay, pray, study. So after she has been barren for so many years, one day Elisha prayed, her expectation rose, and she had a child. The boy grew, and then one day the boy died. She called the driver of her husband and said, get me a car. We're going to meet the man of God. Husband said, where are you going? He said, it is well. The boy is dead. He said, no, it is well. The husband said, okay, driver, take my wife to the man of God. The husband said, but it's not the new moon. You don't see the man of God except on a feast. Or is it? He said, husband, it is well. As soon as she arrived where the man of God was, the man of God saw her and said, madam, it's nice to see you. How is your husband? He said, the man of God, it is well. How are you, man of God, it is well. How is your son? By the way, man of God, it is well. You know what we would have said? I came because my son is dead. The expectation of that woman brought about the testimony in her life. I don't know if you received that. I really don't know if you received that. But I hope you receive it in Jesus' name. The man of God said, how is the state of your son? When you meet somebody, you say, how are you? How is your family? How is your child? How is uh, Everybody's okay. What was the reason for her to go and see the man of God? To pray for a dead child. When she opened her mouth to tell the man of God the state of her child, she said, it is well. I declare your life today, whatever is pronounced dead, is resurrecting in Jesus' name. Whatever it is, whatever it is, the expectation, the expectation, the expectation. Blind Bartholomew is another one in Mark's Gospel chapter 10. He was blind. He heard that Jesus is passing by. And I've announced to you a couple of days ago that Jesus is passing by. I've told you it's a healing service. I've told you I'm not the healer. I've told you he's the healer. And Jesus is passing by. And blind Bartholomew said, Jesus of Nazareth, if it, that is you, today I must receive my sight. They stop him. They try to push him aside. Circumstances, society, religion... Everything was against him. He said, if I can see that man, I will receive my sight. Did he receive his sight? He received. What about the woman who had disease for 12 years? 12 years, the same disease as pursue and, and shamify and put her in his... The Bible says all her spendings are gone. He said, she said, if I may only touch the hem of his garment. Expectation. I want to stop here today. What's your expectation? Do you want to go back home with the same sickness? And if you don't want to go back home with the same sickness, what do you want precisely? Expectation is the mental picture, scriptural picture of your desire. I want all eyes bow, all heads bow, all eyes closed.